Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here. This one based on a new suggestion. Actually, something that's been suggested multiple times in the past. I kind of hesitated on doing it, but I thought to myself, why not do it as a nice treat to everyone out there who's a fan of this character. He definitely has uh, become a fan favorite of sorts. Plus, it ties into the theme that I've talked about where some of the lesser known characters from the movie Goodfellas I've already featured in some past videos. There's a video that I did on Marty Krugman and then there's also the video that I did on Stax Edwards. Both of them have gotten some really good views. I'll include the links for them below in case you haven't had a chance to see them. But yes, this one continues that theme of yet another side character feature within that movie that I'll talk about here. Some of the information is already known, but at least in this case, some of it is new. At least it was new to me. So it was a nice way to, again, share this to my fans and then maybe get some new information out of it. But in this case, you're looking at a picture from the movie itself. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any single picture, a real life one tied to William Billy Bats Bent Venna, who I'm going to talk about here in this video. No, vid no videos, no pictures, no footage, nothing. He seems to, again, be just another mysterious person, kind of like Spider, another person that I've talked about in the past. I'll include the link for that one below, too, that I mentioned that, again, just has no historical record, nothing in terms of photographs. So for this, I'm going to use some of the pictures there from Goodfellas. We'll just have to make up our minds as to what he's looked like. There is one picture that's floating around that seems to be tied to, to a lot of things associated with Billy Bats, but I think it's a mistaken one. More on that here in a minute. But yes, for this video again, let's talk about the infamous William Billy Bats Bent Venom. So who was this William Billy Bats Bent Venom? Well, he was born on January 19th, 1921, there in New York City, specifically in the Brooklyn area. Unfortunately, just like with regards to his photographs, footage, videos, and so on, what little is known about him has just remained in mystery when it comes to his early life. All of that is just one big black hole. Like, there doesn't seem to be anything as to where he grew up specifically, like in terms of an address, where he went to school, if he even went to school, anything about his early childhood going into his teenage years, nothing even going into the young adult area. All of that is, again, just out there, just left to be found, hopefully someday. What we do know is that he would have grown up in an area, same type of mafia world that would have influenced Henry Hill, Tommy De Simone, um, also Paul Vadio, Jimmy Burke, the main fellas there from Goodfellas, it would have influenced his world and somewhere there in his early life, he would have gone into the world of the mafia crime families and eventually joined the Cambino crime family. In fact, it was in 1959 that he became an associate of them and then in 1961 became a full member. Obviously, it doesn't just happen that fast, so one would presume that maybe in his 30s going into 40s, that's when he was at least involved within the crime family world. But who knows? It may have even been earlier than that in. He was considered a protege street soldier for Carmine Fatico and then later started operating with John Gotti. More on that here in a minute because that ties in to what potentially could be the death of Tommy De Simone. But yes, there he was being a made man, a full member of the Camino crime family. In fact, his speciality seemed to be drugs, heroin in other words. He was involved with a group known as the Ormento Group, and they were essentially smuggling all this heroin within the city and then transporting it out and so on. In fact, he ended up working with some of the other people uh, there in the Lucchese crime family and then others as well that he was going to meet on a deal back in February 14, 1959, ended up uh, getting him pinched. In fact, essentially what got him pinched and away to prison later led to the famous scene when he was released there in Goodfellas and it was time for his um, his actual welcoming party. And then, of course, we all know what happened Afterward, more on that here in a minute. But yes, on February 14th, 1959, that's when he went to Bridgeport, Connecticut to complete a drug deal there. But as it turns out, there were some undercover police waiting for him. This is rather ironic to read because 
as we all saw in Goodfellas, Henry Hill also had undercover police working in the background, doing all kinds of secret things to gather evidence and then eventually arrest him. It turns out it's a small world because the same thing was happening to Billy Bats. There was this undercover police just waiting for him right there in Connecticut. So when he arrived, they arrested him and then they promptly charged him with possession and exchange of narcotics. Anyone again in the world of mafia that involves narcotics, it's big sentences. That's why some of the older time gangsters wanted to stay away from them not John Gotti and not this guy Billy Bats they were obviously involved in it um, in a big manner so he was convicted and then sentenced to 15 years to spend time in a federal correctional institution there in Danbury Connecticut so off he went to jail because he was pinched but even though it was 15 years he ended up being released back in 1970 so that was maybe about eight years or so and then that's when the rest uh, the famous scene started happening there in Goodfellas. What was interesting is that it pretty much played out. Like what happened in real life played out as what was shown in the movie. There was some changes, and I'll talk about that here in just one moment. But yes, once he was released, he went to what was described a welcome home party there for him at Robert's Lounge. Robert's Lounge is that infamous place that was owned by Jimmy Burke, the place where uh, Spider was eventually killed. Now, that's another person that you can see the link for below if you wanted to check out one of my past videos, my first one on the Mafia and Gangsters. And then that's where he was having a good time. And that's where he saw Thomas de Simone or Tommy de Simone, Tommy Two Guns de Simone. That's where they had that exchange there where he still told Tommy. And this was the, one of the most famous lines, not just in the film, but pretty much in film history where if he still shines shoes. And then, of course, there was that obvious exchange that happened afterward. Well, Tommy DeSimone took that as a big insult, and then he told Henry Hill and Jimmy Burke that he was going to kill that blank. He didn't say that, you know, obviously with the blank part, but I got to censor it here. But here's where things change. The movie made it seem like Tommy DeSimone did it right then and there. Like, in other words, he came back shortly afterward, same night, same evening, and then decided to take out Billy Bats. But no, as it turns out, it was two weeks later. That goes to show how much bad blood this guy Tommy DeSimone had. Two weeks he had to sit and rest on it. Most other people would have just let it go, or they would have had something in terms of a verbal confrontation at most, and then maybe things would have been cleared. Not in this case. He absolutely had this brewing with him for that time period, and two weeks later, almost as if they were planning it, he was there at another location called The Suite. This was that location I've covered before as well. That was Henry Hill's nightclub, the nightclub that he tried to make legitimate, but we all know in the world of mafia that that's where um, gangsters and others, wise guys, would eventually come over and make get their own so he was there in other words billy bats was on that night tommy de simone knew he was there and then it presumably that's where henry hill and then others knew he was there too i read various versions that they were purposely making this guy drunk like they were making billy bats drunk enough giving him free shots and so on so that way he whenever the hit was going to come there was going to be no way that he could defend himself that makes more sense honestly because um if this is a guy, again, that was a full member or made man for the Camino crime family, you could presume that he could defend himself quite well. But no, in this case, if he was absolutely drunk, that's a whole different story. So Tommy DeSimone waited until the club was right near empty, and then that's when the rest of the infamous scene occurred that matches the rest of the movie itself. That's when he pistol whipped Billy Bats several times over telling him multiple times to shine these effing shoes and then beat him to a bloody pulp. And then afterward, when he was on the brink of death, that's when Tommy DeSimone, Jimmy Burke, and Henry Hill all placed his body in the trunk of Hill's car. They truly did stop at Tommy DeSimone's mother's uh, house in order to get some materials for an upcoming burial. 
And then it was on the drive afterward that they heard that he was actually still alive. He was still there in the trunk beating against it, like trying to get out or doing some kind of noise. And so they went over and then that's when they beat him to death with a shovel. The movie makes it seem like he was shot point blank there on the side of the road. Uh, but we all have to go by the basis of Henry Hill's testimony. He was the only living witness afterward to it. But he says that he beat that he was beaten to death with both a shovel and a tire iron. And then where things changed just a little bit, they went, in other words, to a place, a plot of land that at the time was a dog kennel there in upstate New York. And then that's where Billy Bats was buried. But as it turns out, a little bit later after that, after about 90, you know, three months or so, that's when that area was truly indeed sold. That dog kennel was going to become a, a development of houses. And so Jimmy Burke did tell both Tommy DeSimone and Henry Hill to dig up the corpse. And then where they took him was eventually to a junkyard, a New Jersey junkyard that had a mechanical compactor. And then that's where Billy Batts' final resting place, if you call it that, was. That's where his body was crushed. I imagine along with either inside a car or other materials. And once that happens, it goes to a smelting location. And then that's it. Like it's gone. Like the body, there'll be no trace of it whatsoever. So many of, of these bodies were just gone. You could just imagine from these junkyards. Never to ever to have any trace of them afterward. And this is what happened to Billy Bats's body. There was another claim that there was a point where um, Billy Bats's body was also buried there at Robert's Lounge. The infamous nightclub, that location again that was owned by Jimmy Burke somewhere in the backyard. But that's only speculation at most. Because again of the proper the, the number of times that his body would have been buried and then reburied just as an add up. But yeah, it goes to show that this was actually very close again following what the movie did uh, and vice versa. And because why change it? Like this stuff is almost too good to not change when it comes to the rich material that was being presented here. Here you had Billy Bats. Coming out of jail, insulting Tommy De Simone, Tommy De Simone taking it for another two weeks, just thinking about all the revenge in the world, and then having his opportunity there at the suite, and that was the end of Billy Bats. And then I was mentioning earlier about John Gotti and so on, it's been speculated that the Gambino crime family eventually did learn of the true reason as to Billy Bats' murder. They wanted to find out, obviously, what happened to one of their made men, and then eventually they were able to link this to Tommy De Simone, and so that's why um, it was considered an unsanctioned murder, and when that happened, then that's when Tommy De Simone was later taken out, as we saw in the movie, and it was stated there because of some of that and then some of the other charges as well. But interesting stuff when it comes to this. The only other items to mention associated with Billy Bats is that eventually Henry Hill, as stated a minute ago, became the only witness. And in fact, the, uh, Jimmy Burke was going to be charged with Billy Bats' murder, but the fact that Henry Hill was both the only living witness and an accomplice meant that his testimony would not be uh, upheld to 100% standard. Like, he would be both stating something while he was also the person that committed it. So it wouldn't necessarily have been good for court. So that at least was, that angle wasn't further uh, looked at when it came to uh, charges against Jimmy Burke. But that's the only thing to mention here. But yeah, Billy Bad's definitely one of the most famous or infamous mafioso characters out there all because of the very memorable scene that he had not to mention uh the actor frank vincent short role short number of scenes but he absolutely just made it 100 percent memorable and that iconic line about now going home and getting your effing shine box has easily become one of the most iconic lines in movie history and that's all tied to this this character what happened to him but that's pretty much it if anybody has any more info anything else i might have missed then please post those comments below i mentioned too about the picture associated with billy bats which you're looking at here with the supposed real life one this one though i've seen it actually associated also with pasquale pat the cat spirito someone who i talked about in one of my past videos they do look eerily alike but no i believe this is actually pat the cat this is not um um billy bats uh, there just seems to be no again record associated with billy bats so but if anyone has anything else like in terms of an actual link 
showcasing an actual picture of Billy Bats, then that would really be great to share in the comments below. Alright everybody, thanks again as always, take care.